Something exciting has arrived in Dublin, combining 80 years of service excellence with 120 years of German engineering. Linder's Opel, the new name for Opel in Finglas and Turvey. Call in and meet our expert sales and service teams. Find your perfect 191 Opel and choose your perfect offer. With 0% PCP and HP Finance, a guaranteed minimum of €3,000 scrappage or three years free servicing. Visit lindersopel.ie for details or drop in to us at Finglas and Turvey. Linder's Opel, now open. Terms and conditions apply. Hello and welcome to the special edition of Christmas Movie Spotlight. I'm your host, Dawn Mack, and I'm here with my lovely and wonderful friend and co-host, Pam. Hi, Pam. How are you? Hi, Dawn. It seems like forever since we spoke. (laughs) For real, I know. And, And yes, just I'll get this out of the way right out of the gate. I am honored to be on air with you again. Thank you. Thank you. It's oh, my it's, pleasure to be here. <laughs> well, it should be. <laughs> no, I'm giving it right back to you. Um, I know. But yeah, we are we're very excited to be here with you this evening. Um, we want to welcome all the listeners in and any new listeners who are joining us for the first time. We are glad to have you here as well. Well, today we welcome the lovely and talented Lindsay McKeon to our show, and we are just so excited to have her. It's a real treat to bring this special edition of Christmas Movie Spotlight to you, and we think you're going to be very, very pleased. Oh, yes, definitely. We absolutely love Lindsay, and Lindsay has been entertaining us since the mid-1990s when she first appeared on Boy Meets World and went on to appear in such television series as Saved by the Bell, The New Class, CSI Miami, and One Tree Hill. And soap fans will remember Lindsay from The Guiding Light, me included. I was a huge fan of Guiding Light. She played the role of Mara Lewis, the daughter of Josh and Reva Lewis. And she has been very busy throughout her career, and we are so thrilled to bring you our interview with Lindsay for you now. Please enjoy. Thank you so much, Lindsay, for joining us tonight. We know how extremely busy you are, and and to take the time out to speak with us is such an honor. Oh, thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. Now, I read that you started acting classes when you were 12 years old. What drew you to acting? So, goodness. Seems like so long ago. (laughs) Um, (laughs) My mom and dad actually met modeling in New York, and my mom did commercials. So I was around her, obviously, growing up, and it seemed like fun to me. So I got into commercials probably when I was about 10 years old, and then uh, I was at that point, I think around 11, where, you know, back in the day, I was just talking on the phone too much. I would hide it under my pillow in the bedroom when it was past curfew time. And my mom was like, you need an extracurricular activity badly. So she was actually going to take me to a fencing class one night. And that day her agent called her and said, hey, there's this acting class um, that I recommend. Would you like Lindsay to go to it? So she picked me up from school and she said, do you want to go to an acting class tonight? And I said, sure. You know, sure, whatever, probably. Um, And I went and I felt I told her I came out to her car and I was like oh my god mom I've never felt so free and uninhibited in my entire life um so that kind of started me I I had a hard time in school you know as a lot of teens do um and this gave Mm -hmm. me an outlet for my feelings and emotions and gave me a safe place to explore those Yeah, and, you know, you could have reacted two different ways, I think. Um, Mm -hmm. You could have went to the acting class and froze or come out the other way the way you did, loving it, you know. Exactly. So it's it's, it's a good thing for all of us that you did come out the other direction. (laughs) Thank you. 
<laughs> was welcome. already kind of an introvert, so yeah. I think this balanced me out a bit. Yeah, definitely. Now, there are quite a few actors that start out on a soap opera, but you were on Guiding Light after you had been on a few television series. Um, Correct. You were rather young at that point, and mind mm-hmm. you, you're not old now, so let me make that clear. <laughs> <laughs> Working on it. <laughs> but were you shocked by the amount of work that they do in a day? Oh, for soap operas? Most definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that was some crazy training ground, honestly. And I think within the first six months, maybe, of getting there, three to six months, something like that, um, first of all, I was playing a, a very known main character. I was Mara Lewis. I was Josh and Reva's daughter. Um, and I think I I was doing much better than anyone had anticipated, and I got nominated for... Uh, a daytime Emmy within the first three months of being there. So I think they felt, hey, this girl can handle the load. You know, let's write these scenes for her, Um, which was fantastic. But on the other hand, uh, I had never had that workload before when it came to learning dialogue. Um, And, you know, you're learning 20 or plus pages of dialogue a night and, for me, at some point, my brain just started to reject it, and that's a terrifying feeling for an actor um, because if you can't learn your lines, you can't know the scene, you can't do the work, and um, it's, it's scary. It's a scary place to be. And I remember we had an on-set uh, acting teacher for some of the younger people, and I remember discussing this with her and feeling like I almost was going to have a breakdown, you know, And her word of advice was, don't worry, you know, this happens to everybody when they first get here. (laughs) I I was like, well, that doesn't help me at all. (laughs) That doesn't really make me (laughs) feel any better. I'm still going through this. Um, But it is, you just adapt to it. It's something that I got used to. And your brain, I guess, expands to be able to hold this capacity. And, you know, by the end of my time on the show, if I had had – five pages of dialogue I'd be like ah you know what I'll come in the morning at my 8 a.m call and by nine I'll have it it's all good so you really do get used to it um that that muscle is worked and you figure it out well speaking of guiding light I have to tell you that of all the daytime dramas that have ever existed that was my hands down favorite show um and I grew up watching the show and when you came on scene that was the first time I'd ever seen you in anything, and I absolutely fell in love. And, um, I mean, your performance was phenomenal. And, um, Thank you. If, the sh- if it was great. I mean, and, and then when you left the show, I was like, no, no, no. Because that whole, <laughs> that whole time frame that, that you were on the show, the, the writing was, I think, some of the best that had ever been. And your wow. storylines were just incredible. And it just, you know, it's so different back then to the way they write soaps today. But if the show mm. were brought back, would you be interested in playing the role of Mara again? And if so, <laughs> <laughs> what would you bring to it now, given your vast acting experience you've gained since then? Oh, my gosh. I don't know. That would be a trip. Nobody's ever asked me that question. They asked me this about One Tree Hill reunions and stuff like that all the time, but never about Guiding Light. That's funny. Um, <laughs> gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stumped. That's go, that's going um, way back there. It seems like, but it's, it's so you know, far but back. That was, Honestly, it's so funny, and I was such a different person when I was doing that. Um, I guess because Mara, what did she? She left. She went to Europe or something, didn't she? Yeah. To go be an artist or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. I would think I would want to see her come back, being this almost like a strong. A creative businesswoman uh, yeah. to see her being really savvy and really respected. Um, I think that would be quite interesting. It's actually funny that you're talking to me about Guiding Light because I went um, in my neighborhood, there's a little sushi restaurant, and I went there the other night basically in pajamas to pick up my food. And this car zooms by as I'm about to step in the street, and then out the window pops. Jordi Villasuso's head pointing at me like, hey. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, 
Tony <laughs> and Mariah. Tony. That's so right. And that was the term after so many years. <laughs> and, and honestly, that was the first time I ever saw Jordy Villasuso in anything either. And so the two of yeah. you had so much chemistry on screen. It was amazing what you were able yeah. to do with your characters and just what you brought to the storyline. And so, um, mm. you know, and, and the way you described how Mara would be today is so yeah. reminiscent of the way Aunt Mindy used to be on the show. And um, mm, that's so funny. I, she, ha- she had a lot of that same, you know, gumption and character about her. But it would be, it would, but I think as Mara, um, she would have even more because she was, you know, she was headstrong. <laughs> back then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, look at who her mother is. My goodness. Uh, that's right. I mean, you couldn't be anything but, right? <laughs> exactly. It doesn't get much stronger than Reva. So. No, no, no. That's so true. <laughs> well, um, you know, as you mentioned before, your performance in Guiding Light garnered you a Daytime Emmy nomination, which congratulations mm. on that. Thank you. And, and what is so amazing about that is the incredible thing is you had only been with the show for two months when it was announced. What was your reaction when you learned you You'd been nominated. Um, I guess probably shock, surprise, gratitude. Um, it was totally unexpected. You know, it wasn't the whole time I've been acting. I think also because it just kind of happened for me. Um, there was never, when I was younger, there was never any pressure on it. There was never any expectation of ever, anything or never, I wasn't one of those actors who was like, I knew I was going to get an Oscar, you know, that none of that ever occurred to me. Um, for me, it was all just for fun and for experience and honestly for growth and self exploration. So when things like that happened, um, it, although it was beautiful and a gift, it was never expected. And I think... Yeah. What's crazy is, you know, the longer you do something, it the harder it is to just be like a kid experiencing it, you know, and just playing to play. And the more accolades I got or the more pressure there was, then that's when you, like, start to think about all of that. And that, that can get to you, you know, in a, in a negative way, in a detrimental way, unfortunately, sometimes. Yeah. And, you know, and, and one of the things about that that I think that made that so impressive was the fact that, you know, not every actor can say after two months of being on a given show, they're up for a nomination, you know, a daytime That's Emmy. True. And so th- That's true. that just kind of, I think, spoke to a great, was a great testament to what you brought to Guiding Light and and how much of an impact that you've had on the fan base of that show. Um you know, so it it was quite a feat, you know, indeed. Uh-huh. Thank you. I appreciate that. It was a great show to well, be a part I'm of, honestly. Switch. Some of the most fun I've ever had. Yeah, for sure. Well, I'm going to sw- switch gears a little bit on you and tell you that I'm a huge Supernatural fan. <laughs> and you played Tessa the Reaper on it. I mean, how much I fun know. was that role and working uh, with that amazing cast? I love cast. her. Um, that is one of my favorite characters, honestly, that I've ever played. And I think because yeah, there, there's a light and a darkness to Tessa. Um, there's, there's right. a dark heaviness just because you're dealing with supernatural, you're dealing with death and a reaper that takes souls to the other side. But then I wanted to bring a lightness to her because I have both of those in me and I've done a lot of spiritual work. And to me, death is just a transition and we're all going there and we've probably all been there before in my estimation. So it can't be a bad thing. You know what I mean? And I, 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 mm-hmm. I love that they brought Tessa in and not in a scary way, you know, gave her this form of this young girl to, to sort of, sort of like entice Dean and make him more comfortable with it. Um, and so for me to get to play that juxtaposition of the character, to get to um, live in this world that's not just, you know, this is Earth and you're a human and that, that's it. Um, this, uh, like, spiritual aspect to it I got to, I got to use, and that to me is so exciting. So that's why Tessa is one of my favorite characters. And not to mention I love Jensen, and he and I have known each other since, my gosh, since I worked on Saved by the Bell and he was on Days of Our Lives, we were on the same lot together shooting. So anytime we get to, you know, go back to work together, it's kind of like a reunion of sorts. Um, mm-hmm. 
And, yeah, that set is so fun. The boys are so fun. There's no drama. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they are amazing. I mean, that's the first time I saw Jensen, too, was on Days of Our Lives. And then yeah. he kind of disappeared for a little while. And then when Supernatural came and I saw that he was in it, I said, well, I've <laughs> got to watch this, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because that's what we fans, you know, our soap opera fans do, is when we love somebody, an actress or an actor that plays on our, our soap, they leave, we follow them mm-hmm. where they go, you yeah, know? Yeah, I love that. So, that loyalty. Um, <laughs> yes, definitely. And how many seasons are they in now? They're in, like, what season? I don't even know what season 13. they're on. 11? I, 13? No, I think 13, yeah. My yeah, is it goodness. 13 or 14 now? Oh, my gosh, I can't even think. I think it's, I want to say 13, but it might be wow. 14 now. And That's I have yet to never miss ends. a season. It's amazing. <laughs> never. Yeah. If it does, <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I know there will be a lot of very sad and upset fans. I'm telling you, I don't oh know how they will handle gosh. it. <laughs> yeah, and and all the all the conventions that they do. Have you been to any of them? I have. So I haven't been to the Creation Entertainment ones, which are in the states, but I have been to a couple of them that um, would do them overseas in uh, like London and the UK. Um, and those were fantastic, absolutely fantastic. That was my first entry into the convention world, actually. Um, and it's a lot of fun. I mean, there we get to stay at this castle, this old kind of castle-y place. Um, and, you know, my husband and I would make a trip out of it, and we'd go visit the English countryside and London. So those are really wow. great and exciting to do. Unfortunately, I think those people went out of business, so I haven't been back there since. But, yeah, the convention world is absolute insanity. And, like, going to these One Tree Hill conventions, this show has been off the air for I don't know, seven years or something like that. And the fan base is still going strong. And I think that's because of it being on Netflix and Hulu and you have, you know, parents that were into it that got their children into it or, Mm -hmm. you know, new 13-year-old girls that are getting their family into it because it's on, you know, these networks now. And um, it's just kind of amazing how much television has changed that, that you can do that. And they're always asking about a reunion as well. So, I'm sure if anything happened with Supernatural, all the fans would go crazy and say, when are you giving us a reunion? Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, I can't even tell you how many Supernatural fans that I follow on Twitter and and see all the tweets that go out while the show is airing. So, yeah, it's it's just one of the best TV shows that is still on to this day, and I'm so glad that they didn't stop at season 10 like there was rumor about it. So. Oh, my God. Are you kidding? Thankfully. They were rumored to stop at season 5 or 6, you know, when it was on, <laughs> and they thought it was going to be over. They were moving the time yeah. slot to a slower night, and then they got more mm-hmm. ratings, and it was, it's been crazy. <laughs> this is how yeah, much power definitely. fans have these days, though. Yeah. They couldn't kill the show if they wanted to. The fans are keeping it they alive. They couldn't, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it is beyond oh, no. we, we natural. Would, we would fight to the death for, to keep that on, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like to see yourself doing in five years? Have you ever thought of directing or producing? I am producing now, actually. Um, in a lot of ways, I've kind of stopped acting i i will do you know my own stuff and friends stuff but i actually let go of my agents and managers and um stopped auditioning and it feels so great uh it really feels powerful and refreshing um and i feel like i needed a break from the industry in a way and i have begun to produce movies and i have written two television shows that I'm pitching at different networks right now. And I have a reality series that I've created that I'm pitching at different networks. So, and a blog and a podcast and, you know, numerous things, but this, this feels really good to me. So five years now it's already happening. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is amazing. You know, usually people put their five, that you know they create the five year plan and they put it in motion mm. you know over the course of five years and 
And, you know, you're living in the now, and that's awesome. That is awesome. I like the now. I mean, I, I totally understand that five years to give yourself a goal. Um, yeah. But but for me, that's too – That's also it's the future. I have no idea what the future is going to hold. And right. I have my ideas of it, but I'm going to set it up right now because the actions I take right now are having their effect on the future presently. That's exactly so right. that's where I like to yep. live. Yeah. Yep, that's right. That's right. Well, um, being that this is a Christmas show, we have to ask yeah. you about your you starting Girlfriends of Christmas Past last year and I um, did. What intrigued you the most when you read through the script for the first time? Um, honestly it it was my first um you know, I think entry back into a light kind of comedic Piece in a very long time. I have mm-hmm. done. I had done a lot of dramas and heavier feeling pieces. And um, the reason I I liked this was because I really wanted to get back in touch with my having fun again as an actress, like I was when I was younger. And mm-hmm. this movie made me feel like there was less pressure to be so um, serious and so like real and whatever heavy and. And this was something I could just be silly with and have a good time with. And um, so that's what drew me to this. And then working with the two actresses, Abigail Klein and Tam and Sursok, um, we just got to bond as a little threesome of women. And we were put in all of these really, you know, silly um, situations in the script. And through that and all the time we spent together, we had a lot of fun you know, laughing and hanging out together. So that was really a great time for me. Now, um, are you currently working or have you worked on any other Christmas projects that will be coming up in the future? I have. uh, I just finished shooting one not too long ago in Atlanta that will be called Charlie's Christmas Wish. And I believe that is set to come out next Veterans Day. Um, Mm -hmm. And if you guys want to have me back on the show, I can talk about it then because I think there's going to be a lot of big stuff happening with this movie. And I think it's going to be very important for a lot of reasons. So keep an eye out for that and hopefully I'll be back to talk about it. Oh, yeah, definitely. We would love to have you back. And um, and before we wrap up our interview with you, um, we always like to end uh, with a fun five-question lightning round, but it, it's all Christmas-related. <laughs> and Great. There I thought you were going to say, like, a song and a dance. I was like, oh, yeah, no, no <laughs> nothing, it's nothing major, you know. It's, it's really, you know, mindless, you know. It's just so easy. Um, so I'll, I'll get started. Your favorite Christmas tradition? <sighs> Okay, so lighting of the Christmas tree and decorating oh, yeah. it. And mm-hmm. then my mom puts um, uh, cinnamon sticks and cloves mixed with water on the stove to get the whole house smelling Christmassy. Mm-hmm. And I love that. I absolutely love that. I'll do that for days and weeks just to have that smell in the house. Yeah. There's nothing yeah. like it either, you know. No, um, no, no, no. Uh, nothing like the smell of a Christmas tree too. Oh, my gosh. Mhm. Um, what is your favorite Christmas song? <gasps> oh, uh, something something of the bells, Carol of the bells, some, um, Carol of the bells. Is that what it's called? The really intense one. Yes, Carol of the bells. Yes, yes I love that I, one. I do too. I love it. Any any version of that it is a great version. It's just a beautiful mm-hmm. song. Um, it's so powerful. With or without the lyrics, even you know, even if it's just instrumental with no lyrics, it is so yeah. powerful, as you said. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite Christmas movie? Oh goodness, Elf. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys, I get much grow up now. with the traditional movies. So my husband is from Indiana, so he watches that one with the Midwestern kid with the big glasses. Is that a Christmas wish? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I never connected to that because it, I grew up in Los Angeles, and that just doesn't resonate with me. And so, and I don't know, we didn't really, wa- I don't think we really watched movies as a Christmas tradition. So as I got older, um, the ones I really like are Elf and Bad Santa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, those Which are good you know, they're not traditional, but hey, they, they have their place, and I love them, and I love the humor in them. 
well, hey, if when you watch them, if it makes you feel like, okay, now my Christmas season has begun, then you know that's what that's what they mean. <laughs> so yeah, um, I mean, I don't know if any movie does that for me, but I think yeah. it's for me, it's that change in the air and just the different right. smells and senses that um, really makes me feel the Christmas spirit. Yeah, for sure. All right, hot toddy or hot chocolate? Hot chocolate. I don't even know what a hot toddy is, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink, but I'm glad you didn't put eggnog in there because eggnog is the worst. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, and then last but not least, white lights or colored lights? Oh, white. All the way. Clean, crisp. Yeah, yeah, they're like cool. twinkling stars if you, you know, if you see yeah. them from afar and and when you yeah. have all your lights off in the house and you just see those oh, white lights so glimmering beautiful. it's just so beautiful. Oh, you guys are making me yeah. want Christmas right now. <laughs> I tried to get some uh like solar eco-friendly lights to put up in my front yard that that didn't work at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> so well, you, know, you tried. Guys. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Early to decorate. You go, just go get the cinnamon and the cloves, put it on the stove this weekend, and just let it simmer. And there you that'll kind of do the trick for the time being. So. Yeah. Yeah. That'll trigger that sense of memory, and I'll be in the mood for there Christmas. That's right. Well, that <laughs> is our five question lightning round. Thank you so much for playing. We appreciate awesome. that. <laughs> Very fun. <laughs> And I have one last question for you. Would you share with our listeners where they can find you on social media and if you have websites and Instagram, whatever? Definitely. On Instagram and Twitter, I am at my Lindsay McKeon. Uh, my website is evolvedbylindsay.com. It's a healthy living website. And my podcast is Crass and not politically correct. So if you don't want that, don't listen. It's called Gay versus Straight Bitches on iTunes. Oh my gosh, I love that. <laughs> Can you just tell yeah. us just a little bit about that before you go? That sounds so interesting. Of course. So my girlfriend and I, uh, Rachel Paulson, she's another actress, writer. She's actually Sarah Paulson's younger sister. Um, she and I created a podcast, I'm Straight, She's Gay, and we're best friends. And she also lives in my pool house, which is really funny. We kind of do a lot of things together. Um, and we decided to create this podcast where we would talk about the differences and the similarities between, uh, you know, like dating in the uh, straight world versus the gay world or whatever. And so it's it's a bit of that, and it's shooting the shit, sorry for lack of better word, uh, and, and we play different games. We we play a game called Beat, Blow, Bring Home, which is basically like, um, I don't know how much I can curse you guys. This is Christmas, and my show is very different. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, anyway, it's we play all these silly games, and we do, like, gay news, and we just um, talk about everything and anything. And people love it because it's really relatable, and it just sounds like, you know, it sounds like you're in the room with your girlfriend while she's having a conversation. It's it's fun, it's silly, it's intimate, and it's real. Wow. I, I'm going to have to check that out because that sounds like <laughs> a lot of fun. And, you know, so we, Don and I yeah. listen to a lot of different things, so we're going to have to check that out. Thank Definitely. you. Well, you're from Chicago, right? Right. Yeah. So Chicago's right. got a bit more edge. Maybe you can handle it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we definitely have a little bit of everything here, but, but you know, um I think Don and other listeners from other states can handle it too. So, um oh, good. definitely go check that out. Yeah. Well, so thank you so much for joining us again today, and we are looking forward to all of your new projects uh, once you mm. announce them as far as your producing and directing and your Christmas movie next year. And, of course, we will watch you on reruns indefinitely. <laughs> you guys are so <laughs> sweet. Thank you so much for having me, and I will update everybody as they follow social media and stuff like that. So. Stay tuned, That's and great. Um, thank you again. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. Lindsay. We appreciate and it. 
Yes, Thanks, and we'll ladies. talk to Take you care. next year. <laughs> Yay. Okay. I look forward to it. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, guys. Don't leave us yet. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Christmas Movies. That's X-M-A-S-M-U-V-I-E-S. And also like our Facebook page at Christmas Movie Spotlight. Don't forget that's spelled M U V I E S. And follow us on Instagram at Christmas Movie Spotlight. And don't forget to check out our website, Christmas Movie Spotlight.com. That's movies with M U V I E S. Christmas Movie Spotlight.com. Thanks for listening. See you next week. <laughs>